in this fast track episode, over 50 commands for your stream in just 10 easy to follow steps. Lots of great functions included, like Champion of the Hill. Commands for chat and visual interaction. Emote train, emote welcome and visual lurk. With a website and videos to walk through setup. Also including lots of great visual commands like the be right back player and visual shoutouts. Hello and welcome to my fast track. Today I'll be covering how to upgrade your Twitch stream with over 50 functionalities. So there's everything from basic channel commands to fun visual regimes for you to increase interaction and for your viewers to enjoy. Best of all, it's free and very few actions you need to do to actually achieve this. All of this is made possible by the awesome streamer bot. This has proven itself to be the most versatile stream tool that you can use. It truly is the best way to unlock your creativity. The 10 steps you go through today will help you set up and familiarize yourself with the streamer bot, as well as getting these actions set up. If you're already familiar with the bot, you can skip using the timestamps in the video description. There's also a great companion website to complement this video and where you can go back to reference in the future. You can find this at vrflad.com slash fasttrack. The link is also in the video description. One last thing before we start. For those that already have the bot set up and actions in place, there will be an upgrade package coming later for you. This is for people that are new to the bot. So without further ado, let's get started. First step is to install OBS. Now, if you've got this all installed already, skip straight to the second part. But if you haven't already, coming from Streamlabs desktop, always wanted to look at starting streaming. This is where you go. Go to the OBS project website from the link in the fast track part one, set the operating system, and then download the installer. By default, You'll see the link has got the x64 at the end, that's the 64 bit installer. I recommend that version because StreamerBot needs a 64 bit operating system which will handle the 64 bit OBS. I won't go through the steps today of installing OBS, it's pretty much following step by step all the way through. If you get prompted um, at the start of running OBS, tell it you want to do streaming and accept the recommended settings in there. Now that you've installed OBS, you need to install the plugin that will allow StreamerBot to connect and control it. There's two ways to install this extension. The first one is just to download the package from GitHub. The second is to use the Starscape Creator Studio to download this. It's worth noting that 4.91 is the version to install. There is a later version, but this is not currently supported by StreamerBot and I believe it's still in development. If you click on the link, let's put that to a new tab. At the bottom page here, you'll see the Windows installer. This will then download. Opening this will take just a moment after you give it the permissions. To install, it picks up your OBS location automatically and there you are done. Once you've installed the plugin, you can start OBS. You'll typically be prompted to configure the WebSocket server settings, but if not, you can access by Tools and WebSocket server settings. I'd recommend you set an enable authentication, but make this password something that's unique but not important, something you won't reuse really because the setting for the password is stored in plain text in places. So I'm just going to put a simple password for now. I would suggest you do not have these options enabled here underneath. And then click on OK. Now we have the WebSockets server plugin installed and configured. The next step is to install StreamerBot. 
Now Streambot actually doesn't come with an installer. Instead, it is a zip file. And you can put that to anywhere you want on your machine. If you want to move the location for Streamerbot, it should work just fine, unless you're referencing something in there from another program or within the code itself. As usual, recommended, trust the source. In this case, it's streamerbot.bot itself. So go to that website and then we'll download. The version you need to download is 0.1.8. Now uh, this is uh, required by the fast track package and the fast track package will not release until 0.1.8 is released. It should be at the same time. So we'll download the Streamerbot package here and open up the zip file. So once you've got the zip file opened, set all the files and put them to the folder where you want. So I've got a folder here that I want to put these in. And there you are, you've installed Streamerbot. Now before we start installing the fast track package, there's a really super important warning here. By doing this, you will lose the configuration that you have in Streamerbot. This package is designed for a fresh install of the bot, which will have no configuration, therefore it's no problem. But if you have settings in StreamBot that you want to keep, don't use this package. There will be an upgrade version of the fast track coming, which will allow you to go through and add this functionality into your bot. But this version is purely for upgrading a fresh install that's clean. So with that said, we we'll go through to the downloads, download the zip file, and open it as before. And much like installing Streamerbot, same folder from the zip file, copy it over. So the data file goes into Streamerbot. Now the fast track package is being integrated into the Streamerbot install, and we're ready to start up Streamerbot. The file to run is streamer.bot. You might see .exe on the end, depending on your Windows settings. You might want to create a shortcut to this through your desktop or wherever you want on your start menu, for example. But we just need to run this. It'll take a little while the first time that it's run, and then it'll show the interface from there. And we're ready to go through the initial steps. Now, before we start, we're going to take you on a little tour of the various areas of Streamerbot. We'll start off with the Viewers tab. When connected, this is going to show you the viewers that are in the channel. You can tell it to show all the viewers that are, have been seen by the bot in your channel. And you can look at some details as when they're active, what roles they have, like moderator, VIP, or any custom roles that you have. And you can assign roles like moderator and VIP through this interface by right clicking on the user as well. Next up, we have actions. So actions do the majority of the work of the bot using a large variety of sub actions available, including custom code. On their own, they do nothing, but they can be triggered by many ways. And you'll see this through the tour of the different places we can do this. To create new actions, you can right click on the left hand side and select add. It also gives you various options on the existing actions with that right click. The right clicking in a blank area, you'll see, brings up the options. And this is the way that the bot works in the interface. So it's good to get used to the fact of right clicking in those blank areas. Next up, we have commands. These are the commands that are typed into chat. For the Streamerbot package, for fast track, it's for Twitch. But you can use the same interface here for YouTube commands. So you have the command, various options set in there. You can open up the details by double clicking and you'll see within here where you can trigger it from. Cooldown commands, cooldowns. So global is how much of a cooldown that the command will have for everyone. 
users per user. Options like ignoring the bot account or counters, case sensitivity. The location of the message is uh, the message can be start. So you might want to trigger on a particular word that's mid sentence. You could put it this in anywhere. You have permissions as well. So you'll see a lot of the commands that are set up already out of the box are going to be moderator only commands. But you can modify those by group or by users. Now we're not connected, so we don't have any users to be able to assign the commands to. The next tab is voice control. And this is using Windows speech recognition to trigger actions. Now there's some really important links in the wiki, which is part of the fast track page it's on the fifth step. This will help guide you to get the better speech recognition. There are settings you need to set up in Windows and there's training you can do to improve that. So note, this is not down to streamer bots. The quality is, is very much down to Windows and having the right localization settings, the right language settings in Windows is going to give you the right options and the best speech recognition that you can get. Hotkeys are a great way to be able to trigger actions as well, especially if you don't have something like a stream deck or um, touch portal or any other software like that or hardware to help activate these things. Simply right in blank area, add a global hotkey, specify what you want, maybe control alt C, then you can pick the action and that's it, you've set up a hotkey. Super simple, really effective. Servers and clients, well, these will allow you to connect to various different resources or allow resources to connect to Streamerbot. The WebSocket server is automatically started here. Now this is something that is uh, really critical for some of the functionality. HTTP server, UDP server, WebSocket clients and WebSocket servers are all there. But this is only one you need for the fast track package. Now if you're planning to run OBS on a separate machine, you'll probably want to change this address to the address of the machine as an IP address and then take note of that because you'll need to use it later. If this doesn't start up because the port is already used on your machine, feel free to stop the server, change the port and start the server again. But again, you'll need to take note of this port for later on in the setup process for the fast track. Next, we're going to go into the settings tab. The first one, just having an option to minimize streamer bot to the tray, confirming when you're closing the bot itself, and the option to reset delete confirmations. So if you want to delete an action or a command or a sub action, it will prompt you by default, but you can tell streamer bot to stop that prompt. If you want to bring this prompts back again, this is a button to click. General will allow you to pick the output device by default and if it's not found to use the system defaults. Also, if you're having problems, you might want to change the debugging to verbose and that's where you find it in here. Streamer bot can trigger actions if a file or a folder contents changes. This allows a lot of functionality. So if you want it to watch for a file to be dropped into a particular location, you can tell it to trigger an action and that action may do something with that file. So there's a lot of options you have there. Timed actions allows you to trigger actions on a frequency. Now this can be fixed or it can be variable. There's a way to have a random um, amount of time between two two numbers. You can also tell it to look at the number of um, lines of chat that have to have passed as well, or just base the timed action on the number of lines of chat that have gone past as well. So it gives you a lot of flexibility here to go through that. 
Streamerbot has a credit system built in, so it takes notes of what events have happened through the life cycle of the, the bot being opened. Now these credits can be reset. The, it will automatically reset 12 hours after the bot has been shut down. If you leave the bot running, you'll need to manually reset. The credits can be accessed through at the WebSocket server or the HTTP server. And as a great example for this in a video from Lifesaver. This isn't something that's included in the Streamerbot Fast Track package. Pyramids. So if you have a moat pyramids in chat, when you can set the minimum width, it's the number of moats in the pyramid. So it's one emote, then two emotes the same, then three, two, one, for example, will be a minimum width of three. If you hit that, then it'll be a success action there. Another way to trigger an action. To maybe get the emotes that have been set and go from there. It's worth noting, when these actions are triggered, the variables you can use, and variables are ways to pick out data that's been, um, that's running at the time in the bot relevant to the action. The wiki has the best reference for these. And there's a link for that in the fast track web page under the pyramids here, for example. Streamerbot has a built in quote system and it's pre-configured. You do need to configure it by default with a way to format the output and the for of both the output of when it's added a quote and when it's actually getting a quote back. And these are actions that are pre-configured and you can change. Now you can change the permissions here. So a viewers can add a, a quote or maybe you want to have VIPs, moderators or just yourself. You also have a sub counter. So this will output fixed text to a file whenever a sub is received. So this is a subscription event for Twitch. You can also customize an action to run when that goal is met. So you have a, have a goal set there. Groups is a section to allow custom groups. So you have for Twitch, for example, you have VIPs, you have moderators, you can create your own groups. You can tell it if it's a group of bots as well, and you can assign users to that either through the groups tab or the viewers tab. Finally, under settings, this is a C sharp compiler. If you're using C sharp code for advanced actions in the bots, you'll probably want to look at adding some common references here. So you don't need to keep adding them into the C sharp code you want. By default, you don't need this for, for the streamer bot fast track package, but it's worth noting that this is there. This is a very recent addition, which is super, super helpful. The next tab is for action cues. So action cues are a way that the bot can use to control flow of actions. So if you get multiple events at one go, by default, all those events will trigger at the same time. That might not work well for some actions. For example, if you're playing a sound. So a queue, if you set it to be a blocking queue, will allow you to only run one action at a time. You'll see in here that we have three queues, a default one, the one for the setup, and the visual effects that's a blocking queue. Now you can see it's blocking here. The visual effects are, is a queue that's been assigned to all the actions that do something visual on the screen. So the Ouija board, you can see that's in that queue. The champion of the hill, that while that's running, we want to be making sure no other visual effects can run at the same time. Video shout out as well. You can see that that has got a, a blocking queue. So when you want to have a collection of actions only running one at a time, you can have multiple queues that run independently of each other. 
this is where you want to set the, the, the queues. Now it's worthwhile noting you can create new queues here. You can pause them, resume them. You look at action history and be at the properties of an action. Or maybe if something's hung, you can see a pending action. And you can be at the properties to understand which action is failing here. So this is really useful when things aren't working. Again, this is a, a new addition in 0.1.8 and something very, very helpful to, to use the bots when you, you, you are seeing behavior that's not expected. The Platforms tab is where we'll do a lot of configuration in the bots. Fortunately, most of this is all set up for you. You have Twitch and YouTube currently. We won't be using YouTube for the fast track package. There may be a package for that in the future. Under Twitch, we can do things like set up the accounts that we want to use. We use one or two accounts for that. We have events. Now events, they are triggered by Twitch. The bot will be notified and we can then trigger an action. For example, a new follower is gonna trigger the new follower action. First words, that's when the message is first being sent into chat by a viewer or the moderator themselves or broadcaster. Again, much like the credits, you can reset this, this cache. So this is cached. For example, if you have to restart the bot for whatever reason, it's gonna remember who's already spoken. So it's not gonna welcome people again. But you've got events for cheers, subs, you can set up different ranges of cheers. So you can give a different action to a different number of bits. So if you have a large donation, you can make it more of a celebration. You have subs, resubs, gift subs, gift bombs, so that's multiple gift subs. Again, ranges for all of these things. Raids, again, larger raids, you can do different behaviors. Also, sending a raid, you can do actions. So when you start sending an, uh, a raid, you can do something. If you cancel it, you can do another action. And once you've finally sent the raid and finished the stream, this is when you want to actually maybe do some final actions there. It's worthwhile noting in these tabs, you have these question marks. When you click on these, it's going to show you the variables that can be used within those actions. The Streamerbot Wiki is the best place to get access to all of these variables, and there's a variables page on the Streamerbot Wiki to be able to access that. So, the last actions here host, hype train, community goals, and stream updates. So, you can fire these various events, and you can see that. This will allow you to go through and configure all these specific events. Streamerbot will show you the channel point rewards available in your stream. Now, by default, Streamerbot can only do a limited set of actions to existing channel point rewards. You may need to create your rewards to do some additional actions like changing the cost cooldowns and things like that. But that's easily done. You can right click on existing rewards, duplicate them, then remove the old rewards from the interface on the Twitch dashboard. Then you can use the new channel put rewards, rename them after that point. This is a Twitch limitation. This is not something that can be uh, got around in there. Another Twitch limitation is you can't set the graphics for the channel point reward in Streamerbot. You need to again do that in your dashboard. It's worthwhile noting I've also created a channel point reward image resizer. So if you want to assign images in the right size, you can go to this web page and then you can put in an image that you want and it'll resize it down to the sizes that Twitch needs. You can find links to the channel point resizer from my homepage at vrflad.com, but it's also in the section for the platform's Twitch channel point rewards in the fifth part of the fast track process. You can assign actions to various poll events. 
You can actually create these events as well in Streamerbot, but you need to use code for that, so that's C -sharp code. So that's an advanced option there. There are wiki entries for information on that. And again, like polls, you can have predictions that trigger all these actions. Again, you'll need to use C -sharp if you want to create them automatically from there. Finally, accounts. This is where we connect to Twitch. And we'll cover that in uh, the next part of this uh, video. So as you said, YouTube we won't cover it today, but it does support YouTube as well. The next tab is for broadcasters. Now, as I've said earlier on in the video, this is for OBS, for the fast track. But if you want to use Streamlabs or Polypop, you can connect the, the bots to those platforms as well for broadcasting. We'll go through the steps of connecting Streamerbot to OBS in the next step as well. But for now, we're just going to go through the tour. The next tab is integrations. So you might see Streamlabs here. This is not a connection with the broadcasters. This is to the donations and merchandise events. Again, stream elements is the same. You can connect the bot to voice mod. So in actions, you can trigger voice mod to do some effects to your voice. You can link to donor drive for donation goals. Pulsoid and hype, hype rate for events on your heart rate. So you could do things like triggering an action when the heart rate hits a particular value. And finally in here, the Streambot website allows even more functionality with integration to Ko-fi and Patreon and also settings to connect to the bots, to the website. Now the website is going to allow you to do things like a HTML deck. So you could have a different machine or, or a mobile phone that opens up a page on the Streambot webpage and will trigger actions through that. So connecting to the website is going to allow you to have additional functionality. This is a great addition to the latest version of Streambot. Finally, there's an about page with links to things like the Patreon for the bot. So this is a Nate who does the hard work and the other references here, like the streamer bot webpage, also super useful. The Discord, which is really, really supportive. Uh, the Twitter account for streamer bots, Nate as well, and Nate's Twitch account as well. And please note, all these steps I've gone through and talked through today are in the Fast Track website. So you get a little summary with links to the relevant wiki entries in Streamerbot as well. So you can get a good starting point of what you want to look at here. And now it's time to connect the bots both to Twitch and OBS. So let's start off with connecting to Twitch. So that's platforms, Twitch and accounts. I recommend auto connect and auto reconnect. Then we click on connect to Twitch. This is going to, if you don't already look, you aren't already logged into Twitch, prompt you to log into Twitch. You can see here it's picking my account and it's giving you details of what it can do. Obviously it's so deep with the functionality, it's going to ask for a lot. Do feel free to evaluate these, but you do need these permissions to, for it to run. And then you authorize, which is going to let the bots know the details that you've logged in. You will then see that's connected. Now, if you want to use a separate account from for bots to send a messages, so a different Twitch account, you can do this. Click on connect to Twitch. What I recommend though, is when it pops up the same message here, copy this and go to either an in private tab or a incognito tab 
or equivalent in a different browser. Open that up. So then you log on as that bot account. I'm not going to do that here. I'm just going to leave it as a single account. But once that's done, then you can go through and to connect the bot account to the streamer bot. To connect OBS, we go through the Broadcasters tab. Go to OBS, to the top pane here, we can add in an OBS connection. Give it a name, OBS. The port should be the same one that's in the, the configuration as before. Password, I use one, two, three, four. And it shows it as clear here because it's stored in the clear option there. You want to also retry and reconnect as well. Click on OK. We can then right click and connect. The first time you need to manually connect, subsequent times you open up the streamer bot, it's going to reconnect and not connect automatically. And we can see here it's picked up the current scene that's in there. It's also worth noting in here you can add events. So events that are triggered from OBS can also trigger an action as well. Something I didn't mention before. The fast track package for StreamerBot will actually enable you to create some scenes and sources in the OBS that it needs. So let's go over to OBS. This is a simple OBS with two scenes with no sources in them. Because we've connected to Twitch already and OBS, we can run setup. Now, if you're running OBS on a separate machine, you need to use setup space and then the address of where OBS is. If it's on the same machine, just set up on its own is fine. Do refer to the part seven of the fast track process as to the format to type this in. We're gonna run this. We're gonna see, it's gonna take a little moment just to start up. Then it's gonna create two scenes for us and we can see it's done that. So we've got the fast track BR, BRB scene, which has got a, this is sort of BRI back player. And we see this is just one source. Now this is a B right back source. So this is a video that plays back. We can want to position that, put BRI back, brand it as you want for your, your stream. This is a scene that's used on its own. Then you have an alerts scene. Now this is going to put the latest information at the top by default, it'll look at if you're uh, an affiliate partner or non-affiliate and put the relevant options at the top. So it won't put things like the latest cheer or latest subscription event, um, or in this case, it's a gift bomb. These will be blank by default, but as soon as the events happen, they will populate up there. So we can see it set up those scenes. We have a mate rain. We've got the alerts that pop up with notifications. You've got a video shout out scene. This is one you want might want to position somewhere. You've got the Ouija board. But the, the champion is full screen and the latest, the mate rain and the alerts are typically used as full screen, therefore they're locked. So the nature of this scene, this has all the visual elements that the fast track package uses. And all you need to do is for each of your scenes, add in a scene and set the alerts here. And we can see all those visual elements are now in this web page. So you need to go through each of your web pages and you'll probably want to do it as well on the be right back scene is going through and adding the alerts in place. So this is what you need to do to set up the scenes and make sure that you put it in the right order as you want it to get the visual effects. Now with these scenes having elements that have sound in, you'll probably want to change the properties of them. So in each of these options that have sound, so it's the Be Right Back scene has got this, the visual shout out and the champion of the hill also have sounds. 
you want to go through and set the control audio via OBS. So it's in the be right back, the visual shout out. and the champion hill they're the three scenes that have audio here then in the audio mixer dock you can just pick the settings of any of them it doesn't really make a difference set advanced audio settings and then what you can do is you can pick these relevant ones so the first one we have that uses sound is champion use mantra only mute output and so the next one we want to use that is a visual shout out and the bureau right back which is not there so what we need to do is we need to switch to the bureau right back scene and then within that we can set this one as well to mantra only mute output there we go and so what that means is now you can balance the audio levels with your stream with all these elements here for the, the visual shout out, the champion, and be right back. As the StreamBot Fast Track package is pretty much set up at this point. We've got a few more required parts to do though. So the first thing is to go through the actions for your links. Either you can specify the message. Here you can see Discord is not a full link. Same with all the other links here for Discord, Hover, Instagram, merchandise, TikTok, Twitter, web page, and YouTube. Now you can disable these. You can see there's an enabled column. If you don't have those, right click here and disable those. I would actually suggest disabling via the commands option here. So you can see there's a section for link and you can disable the relevant actions that you do not want to configure. So you configure the action which does the work itself that says the message and change that. That's the only thing that is actually required here. And at this point you can actually go and use a bot. This next step whilst optional, is highly recommended. And that's to configure the actions which are under the section of the channel point style rewards. Here we go. Hydrate, stretch, but also the champion of the hill and ask Ouija. Now, if you're an affiliate, keeping these as they are is fine. You might want to look at the permissions in the commands but if you have channel points, these work much better as channel point redeems. So we're gonna go through, we're gonna set up one of them and show what to do there. So under the platforms, Twitch and channel point rewards, right click, add. Give it a title. This doesn't matter so much because this is going to be added in by the action the first time it's run. Mine's put in the prompt details. So start a free for all to get a new champion of the hill. It's worthwhile noting you can configure this and there's an action to do it in this last step. Uh, step 10 will give you details of how to do that, but we'll keep it as the default for now. So, right after the fight has started with exclamation mark join. You, like any channel point rewards, you can limit the redemptions per stream or per user of a stream, the cooldown is going to be at least uh, 90 seconds because that's kind of the duration of the Champion of the Hill fight. So we're going to say 1800 here. Let's give it quite a cooldown. Then the action is going to be start fight. 
and we'll see that is here. We need to then go to the actions. I've got set fight reward. And here we need to specify the reward we have, which is here. Need to select it even if it's picked the right reward by, by chance. Click on OK. That set up the channel point reward for Champion of the Hill. The Ouija board only needs a single step. So again, going to the platforms, channel point rewards, we can add, ask the Ouija board. Again, cost is fine. Select Ask Ouija here is the way to start this. Ask the Ouija board a question. Again, you'll probably want to do a call down, something like a, maybe five minutes or something like that would be relevant, however long you feel. And that's two of the channel point rewards. You might want to repeat that with a hydrate and stretch as well, but we won't cover this on the video today. And we're on to the last step of this process. The command reference with notes here. You can skip to the different areas here of all the commands. You can understand the commands that we have, but also links to the streamer bot bytes, which is a way to add even more to your bot. You can import examples from there, but also examples that are from the community. So let's have a quick run through the commands. Moderator commands, obviously need moderator or editor or the streamer or broadcaster permissions. You've got emergency. Emergency will lock down the stream and protect you from things like hate raids or bot follows. Emergency error releases this. It's worthwhile noting, depending on what settings you want with around followers, you may need to change the sub actions in there. So review these, make sure they align. You have set SO. So this allows you to put a custom message after a shout out for a streamer. This is something, it's just a plain text thing, so you put in what you want. For example, an artist, you may want to thank them for the emotes. Um, so you can put that, you know, thank you for creating these emotes for the channel and putting them there. Exclamation mark SO command. This will do a shout out for a streamer. It's worth noting it will pick up on pronoun support, but you can edit and customize that message to really make it more aligned to your channel. VSO is a video shout out, so it does a shout out, but also plays a video clip in there for you. Be right back, BRB. That's gonna trigger the BRB scene automatically and play random clips from your channel, if there are any, of course, otherwise I suggest not using the command. And I'll play those random clips until you move away from that scene. This can be triggered by moderators. So if you get pulled away for whatever reason, then the moderators can kick in the bureau back screen. You have set game to set the game that's currently set on Twitch and set title. Finally, the next thing that the moderators can do is show a raid message. This will share what you can um, say in the channel you're raiding. So you might want to use your emotes there for subscribers and for non-subscribers alike. Next up, we talk about the latest overlay. We can see what you have by default, but in this link, you can customize it. If you want the very brown animation, that's great. But if you want to pick a separate color, you need to set the option. And you can see what it looks like on a dark background or a light background. You can customize the color with this nice um, widget there. You can increase the size of these. So by default, they are um, one's large, one's extra large, depending on the affiliate or not. 
You can also customize the font family as well to be what you want. And those changes are going to change in real time. The overlay will split the screen up into a number of elements that you've picked and they can be justified to the left, which is the default, or the middle of those areas. You can see here, that's what it looks like. Finally, you pick what you want in there. These aren't added to the preview, but for example, if you want subs, follows, cheers, and hosts, it's going to put these in order here. Now you can change the order of these if you want as well to, to reorder those, but you have to do that manually. Finally, copy that to the clipboard and then you can go to OBS and go to the alert scene here in the latest paste in. That's what you've just created here and it's customized that for us to what we want. That simple. The events and visual notifications can be customized again in this web page. Let's go a bit further down. You have two styles of alerts. The style you get by default is here, but you can have an alternative style again customizing it. These notes for the alerts are events to exclude. It'll include them all by default. You can pick a font. You can pick a font color. In real time, you'll get to see what that looks like. In the uh, alerts overlay, you need to put the broadcaster name in here. So for me, VR Flad. Um, this image will be the broadcaster by default, but you can tell it to try and use the redeemer of the action. So if someone's subscribed, it'll pull in their display picture. This is up to you if you want to enable this. Again, which which actions do you not want to have here to click? So I want to use redeemer image here. Font color, so I want to have the yellow and the background to be red. Or oh, blue, there we go, looks better. Um, font family again and we can also copy that to clipboard, go to OBS, and when there's events trigger, we will see from the alerts here. It's worth on noting the broadcast is dynamically put in as we set up the bot. It reads in who the broadcaster is. Now we don't see alerts here, but we can test these in the bot under Twitch events we can trigger these for example we can try a i think we've got a follower in there so the latest follower yes so if we go to general we can click on test we'll see the pop-up there we'll see the latest update that so we can test these events in that area there so that's the events and visual notifications that we can customize here quite easily Next up, the Ask Reader, which we've talked about before. This tells you, you can find the responses text file. This is underneath the data folder where you installed the bot. And you can modify those responses to control what responses the Ouija board can come back with. Again, customizing it to your channel. Champion of the Hill. There's options within here. So if we go to the relevant action, you'll see that under start fight, we set the globals here. Now these are names you want to be different to be champion of the hill. We could be a diva of the mountain if you want to do. So we change the champion here to be diva. And this one here, of the mountain. So this will allow you to customize the responses and the chat messages that are generated within this. It's worthwhile noting it doesn't change the description of the channel point reward, but it does change the title for you. Hydrate and stretch, we talked about this. 
setting as channel points rewards is um, recommended. We have all sorts of chat actions. I won't read through these, but you can see there's lots of options there, including things like a love command to get a random percentage of how much you love a particular item. Rolling a dice or flipping a coin are in there as well. The lurk does a visual lurk animation. Give it a try. I think you'll like it. Chat commands. Commands will dynamically show what commands the bot can run for that user. So if you're a moderator, you'll get more commands, of course, than a non-moderator. Things like follow H, number of followers, stats. Again, with all these commands, you can disable them individually. So you can have the functionality that you want in your stream. This isn't about making cookie cutter streams. This is about helping understand what the bot can do, giving you a head start and allowing you to customize it to make it truly your own stream. You have a death counter that does deaths overall that have been recorded on your stream, but also deaths per game set. So when it sets the death count to increase, it does it for that specific game. You can also modify the numbers, be it the, the totals to back to zero. You can set the deaths to a particular game. So if you already have a death counter and another bot and you want to migrate the number over, you can do that for the game that you want. You can also do the death set as well. Um, so you can, this is what I'd recommend typically to do catch up because it'll ap apply deaths to the game and the overall at the same time. But there's lots of options to get the death counts to what you want. We talked about links and editing those earlier on in the video. Now the pronouns. This is something that's really powerful within the bot. It doesn't just only pick up on the pronouns that have been set in the, the well-known service here, the pronouns.alejo.io. It allows you to customize outputs. So it can look at your pronoun values and it can then customize response, um, responses. So for example, I'm he, him. And if I was being shout out by the bot in the, the shout out command, it'll say, check out VR Flad, where, you know, who is a he, him, where he last streamed this, or he was last streaming. But if someone doesn't have a pronoun set, or maybe they're a, they are they, them, it's going to turn around and say, check out that streamer's name, the they, them, or not at all if it's not been specified, where they were last streaming. So it, it picks up on different parts of the sentence. You get a lot more details here in the pronouns page. It talks about the setup here, but it's already set up for you. If you want to use particular values, this is the table to really reference to know how to use things. And you can see that these are the pronouns there. It's worthwhile potentially watching the video, looking into this. If you want to customize it further, you can have your own custom set of pronouns. So you can actually, actually look at what you want in each of these values. And then you can do a pronouns override as a user or mod pronouns override specifying the user to set up a custom set of pronouns. So you can truly be accepting of uh, any pronoun sets that people want to set. It takes the time to set up once you have it set up, which most of the work has been done in the fast track package. Incredibly powerful stuff. We have a quote system built in quote, space, add, we quote, add, we talked about this before, but these are the functions, how to use it, how to delete it. You need to be moderated to delete or add. Also, you can change the addition permissions to be VIP. Deletion always needs a moderator though. Everyone can do quote on its own to get a random or quote a number to display a specific quote. You also have a moat rain, which is a, a wonderful um, visual effect that can do various things. 
it will know when it's someone's coming in for the first time to check a message and it'll rain down their their display picture it will rain down the emotes using chat you can use the exclamation mark er space rain command to look into this further um so to, to rain down multiple um, emotes that are specified that is required to have a VIP or moderator you can um, leave it as default which has all the functionality or you can limit the functionality here by changing the URLs here so it's worthwhile looking at um, the emote rain version 2 video um, the lurk visual lurk command the way to change that is tells you up in the lurk section ahead you rename the action for that but yeah i'm going to link in this um the web page here it will be there by the time this goes live to the emote rain command so you can customize that further and there you go you should be fully set up now with the best streaming bot out there if you found this helpful please do like and subscribe Feel free to comment with any questions you may have, or to pop by my stream to check out the bot in action. Also, look at the Streamerbot Bytes videos on how to learn more and to add additional functionality to your bot. Finally, thank you to so many of you to enable me to create this content. Those supporting me, give me feedback to improve and sharing kind words. Thank you, Nate, for making this, and the Streamerbot community for supporting this amazing bot. I've listed all the people at the bottom of the Fast Track homepage. Please do check out the content as well. And that's it for this time. Take care.